Langoliers. Who here knows what a langolier is? One, two. Wonderful. One Sunday afternoon, my wife and I stumbled across a TV miniseries, which was run congruent, so that we were able to watch the entire thing and waste an entire Sunday watching a movie which transformed the way I look at life. It was a movie, a silly movie. Langoliers is actually a book written by Stephen King that was put into a miniseries. A group of passengers on an airliner fly through a time warp. 90% of the passengers disappear. All that's left is their jewelry, Oddly enough, no clothing. A few passengers and one pilot survived the time warp. <laughs> Waking up suddenly from a sleep, they finally find an airport to land in. They land the plane. Oddly enough, there is no one and nothing in the airport. A lot. No people, no noise, just an empty airport. They get off the plane, they look around, they discover that the things in the airport, such as the soda pop or the beer or the food, are tasteless, no carbonation. Matches won't light. It's a dead zone, seemingly. And in the background, there is a noise, a subtle noise, that as the movie progresses, gets louder. One of the members, one of the passengers, tells them, that's the Langoliers. You see, this passenger was introduced to the Langoliers by his father, who brutally abused him as a child. He told him that Langoliers would come and eat all the bad boys and girls, and that if he was bad, the Langoliers would eat him in his sleep. This noise continues to get louder. It's almost like paper rustling or fire. As we go through the process in this movie, this noise increases. And of course, the characters do what characters do. They finally are able to get fuel into the plane. They realize that on the plane, things actually work. Soda pop bottles have their fins, matches light, so they realize that the fuel in the plane will be able to fly them out of this airport. It's the only option they have. The Langolier noise is getting louder and closer. By the time the people actually get on the plane and begin to fly, you can see the Langoliers coming over the mountaintop. They are massive balls of teeth gobbling up absolutely everything in their path. You watch as they fly away as the tarmac is eaten up by the Langoliers. The entire airport is gone. They are in the void. They're able to travel back through the time warp. Sadly enough, they fly and land in another airport that is a dead zone. Nothing is there. But they stop and they think there's something going on, some kind of noise, some activity. And they realize that maybe, possibly, in their time jump, they had moved forward in time as opposed to back in time. They realize this. Suddenly the characters say, let's get against the wall, get against the wall, quick, quick. And the next thing you know, the airport is filled with people. The realization for me was that there is no past and there is 
no future. How many of us in our lives are run by those things that we did that maybe we're not proud of, or we're not happy with, or we didn't do well enough, or we didn't quite get done what we knew we needed to, and we drag that into our relationships. A mentor of mine said, kind of like dragging a chair, a dead body around with us. We drag that into the future, into the present, and that affects our relationships. It affects how we communicate. It affects how we act with one another. Because this thing in the past, we've literally brought into the present with all its emotion, its anger, its fear, all its power. Or, worse yet, oh, it's going to be so nice when I finally get here. I finally get that perfect job. Oh, that, that girlfriend I've been waiting for. That boyfriend, the one, the one. You know, he rides that white horse, uh, white Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> and we live in that future. And we drag that into the present. The gift I learned Sunday, that so-called wasted Sunday, was that the Langoliers eat up the past. It's gone. It does not exist. And if there is a past, there's nothing in it. It's a dead zone. I don't have to drag my history with me because it doesn't exist. And guess what? Living in the future is not possible. It's not when it happens, when I get that, when that perfect thing goes on. Now is all we have. Right now. Right now. Right now. And if we can bring right now into every communication we have, whether it's in a personal relationship or in a sales opportunity, be in the moment. Not in the lost sale. Not in the last relationship that didn't work, or the job that didn't work, or into the future about how great it's going to be. Be in the present. Release the past. The Langoliers ate it anyway. <laughs> be here now. This is where the power 